Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine and this is Raspberry Reads. If you're new here, then thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I hope that you enjoy my content and if you do, then please hit the subscribe button. And also if you're liking my content, then it always helps to hit the like button as well. Um, but yeah, so I um, had a pretty good reading month in June. Um, and I read some really good books, which I'll get into in a minute, but how was your reading month in June? Did you read anything that was surprising or did you have perhaps some duds? Um, I'm always interested to hear in, um, how other people's reading journeys, um, are going. So please let me know in the comments below. I finished seven books in June. Some of these I had started earlier, but I didn't finish them in the previous month. So I finished them in June. Um, and I have a really good mix of um, different genres and different star ratings and yeah all sorts of different things so let's just get into it shall we um so the first book that i finished in june was beloved by tony morrison and i mentioned that i was reading this book or actually rather listening to this book um with tony morrison being the narrator i think i started it in um, april end of april um but my loan expired so i had to wait for it to come back to me Beloved is actually a really hard book to describe because um, it was it was a bit confusing, I'm not going to lie, but essentially it's about um, this um, black family who are runaway slaves and um, they are the main and the main character is sort of like haunted by her past, let's say, um, her and her daughter. Um, and then this this character comes along named Beloved um, and let's just say that she's connected to um, the past of the protagonist. Um, so yeah, it was a really interesting story. I would say that um, I read about 75 or listened to about 75% of this book and then was just getting a little bit confused. So I ended up looking up on Wikipedia, um, sort of like the overarching synopsis. And then after reading that, it made a lot more sense. So I would say that this is one of those books that if you are struggling with it a little bit, it is worth to read the background context. context. So for example, I didn't know that Toni Morrison actually wrote this book sort of loosely inspired by a true story that she'd come across in, I think, a newspaper article. Um, but yeah, once I had read that context, I sort of thought like, okay, the rest of this book makes a little bit more sense. Um, but leaving aside the sort of the plot for a moment, um, the narration was beautiful. Toni Morrison had a very gentle way of delivering her, um, her writing. Uh, it was very so like slow, um, and well paced. The book was the, the plot and also the delivery of the book was harrowing and haunting. Um, and Toni Morrison's writing is extremely poetic. I would say perhaps controversially that at times I felt that the meaning got lost in the poetry. There were so many metaphors and just poetical writing that I couldn't understand what was going on. Perhaps that was because I was listening to it and, um, you know, listening to it, maybe falling asleep at night, but so it's a book that you really have to pay attention to. I, I feel anyways. Um, but I, I would definitely read more by Toni Morrison. I don't know if beloved was perhaps the best choice to pick as the first one because it was just really weird. Um, but, uh, I've seen that beloved is described as the original American horror story. So there is an element of horror in this. There's an element of magical realism. Um, and yeah, so it's historical fiction, but it's also very speculative in its content. Um, so yes, I gave it four stars mainly for the writing. I don't think that the story was actually really for me. Um, but I would like to read more by Toni Morrison because I did enjoy her beautiful writing style. Um, and I should have mentioned at the beginning of this, but I was participating in um, Shelley or Shelleyish's uh, read historical fiction readathon for, for 2024. Um, I'll pop 
um, some links to that in the description below. But um, Shelley created a bingo card, um, which you could, you could read just one historical fiction novel to participate, but if you wanted to, uh, you know, really go for it, she created this bingo card. Um, I will say I didn't complete the bingo card. I don't even think I covered like all of the, um, like a line, but in any case, I did try and fill in as many squares as possible. So this one I wanted to use as the, um, an historical fiction, which has a speculative element or magical realism element. I could have used Beloved for many of the other categories, but that's the one that I went for. So yes, Beloved by Toni Morrison, four stars, um, mainly for her writing style, not so much for the story, although it was interesting. If you've read um, Beloved or any other book by Toni Morrison, I'd be very interested to know your thoughts on um, that, that book in particular, but Toni Morrison's writing style. Okay, so moving away from historical fiction for a moment, the next book I finished in June was a, an audiobook as well. And this was How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. Um, and I will start by saying that I didn't like this book, uh, which was a real shame. So it's dystopian, which is one of my favorite genres. And it's basically about um, the aftermath, the world in the aftermath of a plague. And the plague is um, sort of created from melting permafrost in the Arctic and it releases this virus and then there's a plague. But the book is basically vignettes or short stories that are supposedly connected. I didn't see very many connections. Um, and then as such, there wasn't one narrator. There were lots of different narrators for the audiobook. Um, but yes, so I found the vignette hit and miss and from what I've seen on other reviews on Goodreads um, many people also feel the same way. One of the vignettes or short stories that I really did enjoy um, and that I found extremely emotive is um, the one about a theme park for terminally ill children. Um, that one was completely unforgettable but others I just I couldn't tell you what they were about. Um, to the point that I think I fell asleep finishing this book and I didn't bother rewinding and going back. I was just done with it. Um, the ending chapter in particular, I think it was something to do with like going out into space, but it really didn't fit with the rest of, of the overarching storyline. So that didn't do it for me. Um, yeah, it sounds like I'm being so like negative about this. There was some, it was a really interesting idea. Um, the writing was decent. I just felt like it just wasn't executed well. Um, and it was just a little bit overcomplicated. Um, so I found it just a little bit boring. And for that reason, I wouldn't recommend How High We Go in the Dark. Um, and I gave it two stars. So yeah, that was unfortunately a miss for me in June. Next up, um, we have Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. So I had started this um, in May and just didn't finish it. So that's um, including it in the June wrap up. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about this book because I have mentioned it on my channel before. And actually I spoke about it in a vlog, a camping vlog. I'll link the camping vlog video for you in the description below in case you're interested in my thoughts sort of as I was reading that book. Um, I thought it was really fun. Um, again, this is a book that I've seen mixed reviews, but um, I had also tried to read Rachel Joyce's um, something about Harold Fry, like his journey, um, and I, I DNF'd that book. So but I'm pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed Miss Benson's Beetle so much more. Um, so this is basically about features two main characters, Marjorie and Enid. Marjorie um, is very keen to go and find this golden beetle in New Caledonia. I should say this is set in the 1950s, so historical fiction. Um, and then Enid ends up being her assistant and they go on a, a huge adventure to the other side of the world from London um, to try and discover this beetle. Um, I gave this book four stars because I really did enjoy it. There were only a few things that were kind of a miss for me. Um, sometimes I felt like the characters were a bit of like caricatures. Enid was a little bit overdone at times, but I think it still worked with the plot. What I didn't think worked was the character of Mund Mundy. Um, he was a prisoner of war. Um, 
or an ex-prisoner of war. And he was meant to be sort of like the antagonist in this story. And I just, I just didn't feel like it was necessary. The whole book could have um, still been a good adventure without him. Um, and then without sort of saying too much, the ending was unexpected. And I also felt that that was unnecessary and in a way kind of ruined the book for me. Um, but I still enjoyed it. I think I would read more by Rachel Joyce, um, especially if it featured a strong female protagonist like this one. I thought um, that Marjorie was a very interesting character that developed quite a lot. So she was a bit wishy-washy at the beginning um, and then really came into her own towards the end of the book. Um, and I appreciated that. Um, I thought I would put this book on the bingo card for the different country square since I don't know anything about New Caledonia. Right, next up we have The Favour by Nikki French. So I've read lots of Nikki French books at this point um, and some of them are hit and miss. Uh, the Favour is um, one a book that is also received mixed reviews on Goodreads. Some people really didn't like this one, but I actually preferred The Favour compared to some of the other ones that I've read recently. Um, I listened to this book on audio and that was narrated by Imogen Church and Imogen Church did a good job with this narration. So this book, it features um, Jude, who's a doctor. I believe she's like a geriatric doctor, sort of end of life care. And she ends up um, having a random encounter with her ex-boyfriend, Liam. And uh, Liam was a boyfriend from like her teenage years. And Liam asks her for an unexpected favor. Now, a few days later, uh, Liam is found murdered. Um, and then thus begins the sort of bizarre um, journey that Jude goes on. Um, I don't think it's giving it away too much to say that Jude uh, was actually nominated to be um, one of Liam's uh, executors of his will. And um, she, through that, she ends up meeting sort of all the people that were involved in Liam's life, um, mainly to do with the house that he was living in, which was sort of like this commune, communal house type thing, um, which has a very dysfunctional cast of characters. Um, so I just, I really liked the ridiculousness of the mess that Jude gets herself in. Um, and it was, it was a good mystery. I wanted to find out what had happened. Um, so yes, overall, I did enjoy this. I thought Jude was a, um, not so much her as a character, but the situation she finds herself in and then how she approaches those scenarios I found, um, entertaining. Um, so yeah, I gave this one four stars. Turning back to historical fiction, um, the next book I read or actually listened to was The Wind Bee Puzzle by Lois Lowry. Um, and this was narrated by Lois Lowry. So Lois Lowry is, um, well, she's one of my favorite authors. She uh, wrote The Giver. Um, so she writes middle grade books. And this was a very short middle grade book. I think, I think the audio was less than three hours long. So it didn't take me long to read it all. And this was a really interesting book. So essentially it was a combination of Lois Lowry's um, dialogue or exploration on the 2000 year old um, Windeby body. Um, so this is a body that was discovered somewhere in Germany. And then she's very interested in this sort of archeological discovery. And then she, so she does talk a little bit about that as sort of like the history side of things. And then she reimagines what might've happened to this Windeby body. Um, and so you get two, two perspectives, two, like a dual narrative of a boy and a girl um, set in the Iron Age and you know, the story of the girl and basically how she ended up dying and being preserved in that way. And then it provides a counter example of if it was a boy, how did he die? And <clears throat> how was his body preserved in that way? So yeah, it was a really interesting concept. I personally felt that the themes were a little bit too mature or morbid or even too like uh, scientific 
for a middle grade audience. Maybe that's me being naive to what children can cope with these, these days, but um, some of the content was very much like, you know, how, how they died. Um, so for example, things like stonings. Um, perhaps that would be better for like an older um, child audience, but in any case, it was, it was a really interesting book. Um, nowhere near as good as The Giver. However, I felt that there were like subtle similarities in some of the themes that Lois Lowry applied to the Windaby puzzle from The Giver. Um, so yes, overall I gave it three stars just because it was an it was an interesting book. It wasn't it didn't blow me away, but it wasn't bad. So yes, three stars. And then for the bingo card, I thought that this could be um, a new to me time period because I don't think I've ever read anything about the Iron Age. So yeah, there you go. All right, we've got two books left and they're both also historical fictions. I really tried to focus on historical fiction um, for the readathon in June. So the next book we have um, is called Vita and the Birds by Polly Crosby and I um, listen to this one on audiobook and the narrator was Kristen Atherton um, and she did a pretty good job narrating it. Um, and so this one was both a mystery and a romance and it's about um, two women. So Lady Vita um, who is like a um, aristocrat and um, an artist named Dodie and um, so there, this is a dual timeline book. So their timeline is set in the late 1930s. And then you have a second timeline featuring Eve. Um, and Eve is Dodie's granddaughter. And that timeline is set in 1997. Basically, Eve goes to the town where um, Dodie lived. And this is shortly after her mother has passed away. And I think she's just looking after like affairs basically. Um, and then you sort of follow this mystery um, related to uh, what's called the Cathedral of Marshes. So there's this like glass cathedral um, that's a bit mysterious. It's associated with um, like an old, I don't wanna say manor house, an old estate. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's essentially, and again, this isn't really spoiling it because I think it's sort of provided in the descriptions, but this is um, a love story about two women. So it's got lesbian content. Um, I would say it's very subtle. It's, it's not really, a, it's not really a romance. It's more about their um, developing relationship, friendship than, um, like a traditional lesbian content, let's say. I thought that the writing was okay. It wasn't brilliant. Um, and the other thing that I didn't particularly enjoy is that I didn't really connect to the character Eve, particularly when the mystery is solved and her response at the end of the book. I just didn't gel with it whatsoever. And it kind of, I would say it brought the book down because I was really enjoying it for a while. And the ending was just a little bit of a letdown. Um, so in in the end, I gave this book three stars. Um, I, I don't know if I'd be quick to read more by Polly Crosby, just because it was, it wasn't anything remarkable. It was just sort of your bog standard historical fiction. Um, and if you're gonna do lesbian content, you need to do it well um, from, you know, hello lesbian. Um, so somebody like Sarah Waters, for example, you really get the sense of that sapphic relationship. Whereas this one was, it was just sort of happenstance. There was a lot of tropes um, used that um, just didn't really work. And yeah, so it was again, another case of, it was an interesting premise, um, but it, it fell a little bit on delivery. Um, so three stars for me and for the bingo card, um, this one actually fits for the um, mystery and romance square. Have you read Vita and the Birds or anything else by Polly Crosby? And if so, um, what, what, what do you think? Um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And I think I've saved the best for last and I don't think it's going to be a surprise when I say that this book is also a contender for one of the best books 
that I read this year. Um, so I finally got to James by Percival Everett. This has been all over the place. It came out this year or late last year. It's new anyways. Um, and this is a reimagining of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. So yes, I had um, this ebook on hold on my Libby app for many, many weeks, uh, patiently waiting for it. And I just finished it um, this morning, the day that I'm filming this. And it was, it was so wonderful. So because I just finished it, I, I, I don't really have all my thoughts put together for it. So apologies if I'm sort of all over the place, but I thought that James was compelling, imaginative um, and creative. Uh, it had great twists in it. Um, and there was very good reinterpretation of um, dialogue. So the original um, Huckleberry Finn was told in vernacular. I really liked the twist that Percival Everett um, did regarding this. Um, I also really appreciated the new sections that Percival Everett added in. Um, so this story is obviously focusing on James or Jim. Um, so the black man's character in Huckleberry Finn. And so you, re you do have Huck's um, journey as well, but it goes off on these new tangents um, periodically where you really get to understand um, James's perspective or Jim's perspective. And I enjoyed those sections so much. Um, this book was shocking, um, it was harrowing, um, and it was also subtly funny. It was really witty. Um, this is the first book I've ever read by Percival Everett. I think he has over 30 books and I am late to this party because I loved his writing style so I will definitely be picking up more from him. So yeah, overall I thought that, um, you know, a, a reinterpretation of such a controversial classic is a mighty task and I thought it was smartly executed both in terms of the interpretation but in the writing style. Um, the only thing I didn't like and this is just a personal preference is I didn't enjoy the sections where James is essentially hallucinating and he's talking to um, philosophers or various people from a uh, past. I think most of them were philosophical conversations. Um, that was just not for me, but um, I understand why that perspective was included. Um, I liked, so the bit in, I, I should say, I read Huckleberry Finn in May, so if you want my thoughts on that, you can um, watch my May wrap-up, which I'll link below. Um, and I mentioned in that wrap-up that I got bored at the end of Huckleberry Finn from basically the confidence men part onwards. And I became bored again uh, when the confidence men um, reappeared. So it's like the Duke and uh, Bridgewater, I think. So these two like scammers. Um, I think that um, Percival Everett did a really good job tackling that section and then I liked that he just took it in a completely different direction. It was so refreshing. Um, so yeah, I mean, five stars for me. Uh, I, I can't really fault it. It was, it was great. Um, I think that if you're looking to read a new book about sort of an enslaved perspective, um, or an enslaved narrative, then this is definitely one to pick up. Um, and so from the historical fiction uh, bingo card perspective, I, I said that this one was from the perspective of an ordinary person. Um, really, I would argue that James was probably an extraordinary person, but um, it was just nice to have an account of somebody who is perhaps um, uh, underrepresented. That was the whole idea of the book, I believe. So yes, perspective of an ordinary person. Five stars, James. So yeah, I'm really pleased that today is the last day of June and I ended on such a high. Um, I think the only historical fiction book that I haven't finished is The Covenant of Water by Vergesi, I think the surname is. Um, I haven't continued with that one this month. I'm only 40 pages in. I think I'll just I'll just poke away at that one over the summer and I was also going to try and get to the wager about the the ship I can't remember the author's name but um, I ended up uh, 
giving up my hold for the ebook version of that on Libby and I decided to put a hold on the audiobook so that'll come to me in maybe like six weeks because I think I might enjoy listening to that one more than reading it so I'll get to that historical fiction at another point but yes so I think I did um, pretty good for June in terms of um, trying my best with the historical fiction readathon so thank you Shelley for hosting that readathon it was a lot of fun um has anybody I should say has anybody else read um any of these uh, particularly James I'm interested to know what other people think of that um but yeah did you participate in Shelley's readathon um did you manage to fill the whole bingo card if so then that's fantastic well done um and yeah I mean obviously I'll keep reading historical fiction beyond June because that's one of the main genres I read but I think I'm going to try and dip in, in and out of a few other genres um, over the summer. I think my um, summer TBR is actually going to be up before this video so you can have a look at that um, to see what I'll be up to this summer. So that just leaves me to say uh, thanks for being here. Um, I hope that you are enjoying whatever it is that you are reading. I hope you're well and I will see you soonish in a new video. Take care. Bye. Thank you.